Twitch app. Okay, so here we are. List four, we have the year, and list five, we have the population of people living on farms in millions. So it's, it's worthwhile always in every problem. Sometimes they're easier, sometimes they're not, but to just make sure you know what this data point is. So this is the year 1975, and this 8.9 means there's 8.9 million people living on farms in that year. So we're supposed to make a scatter plot of this and find the least squared regression line. So here we go. Um, we'll go to scatter plot first. You do second stat plot. Okay. We're going to hit enter on plot one. And we're going to graph, in my case, my x values were in L4. So I'm going to do L4 against L5. Okay. I'm deciding to use the little box as a mark. Uh, we'll press zoom nine what this thing looks like and there you go so you should always comment on what direction form and strength those three things all right so the direction would be negatively associated right because as the year goes up the population of people living on, living on farms goes down um, I would go with this pro this looks pretty linear to me some of you might argue that it's slightly curved near the bottom uh, you know on the right part of the graph over here somewhere okay but generally, a line would model this data pretty well. And strength, I would say this is strong. This is pretty closely packed around some kind of line. OK, so um, we've been talking about residual plots. I just want to make one comment. If right now, before I do anything else, I go to stat plot, and I go to um, right here, and I go to the Y list, and I decide I'm going to put my residuals in there. So I do second stat. And I go down and find residuals, number seven on my list. And everything looks fine. And I press zoom nine. OK. This is showing me a graph of residuals. Now, um, that might, may or may not be the residuals for this regression. OK. Now, magically, I picked one that had the same number of points. OK. Here's where the danger runs in. I was hoping to have an error, and it didn't happen. But some of you, if you do this, will get an error right away. And that's because this residual list would be the residuals for the last linear regression you did. OK? So that can occur sometimes. I was hoping that this would happen here. And if that's the case, if it's the last residual you did, and it didn't have the same number of points in it as list 4 had, then you'd get a dimension mismatch error. Now, in this particular case, the residuals um, had the same number of data points as L4. OK, so I'm going to go back to, st oh, actually, I'm in stat plot. What am I doing here? Uh, I'm going to hit Enter again. I'm going to go back to list 5, just so I'm still looking at my original scatter plot, L5. I'm going to zoom 9. And what I'd like to do is put a line of best fit on here. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to go stat, calc, number 8, linear regression. I need to tell the calculator where, where the x values are. They're in L4, comma, and then the y values are in L5. And then we always do this little trick. We hit comma, vars, y vars, function, y1. OK, we hit enter there. And we get our line of best fit. All right, so let's just take a minute to, to write that down. Uh, it looks like what is a equals 1166. So we're going to have y hat equals 1166. 0.9273. Oops. Plus, we're going to have something times x. So we're expecting our slope to come next. Negative 0.586. Or, yeah, I could do negative 0.587, I guess. We'll do that. OK? All right. So a couple of things. Um, we should also make a note of r while we're at it, just because it's, it's, it's good. r is 0.988, and r squared is 0.977. Yep, r is negative, though. Now, you should expect that to happen. I, I forgot to write the negative over there. You expect the sine of r and the sine of the slope to be the same. Okay? The fact that r is 0.988 means a line fits this data very well. r squared means that 97.7% of the variation in y is explained by the linear regression on x. The other thing you should be able to do is look at this slope and explain the meaning in context. Right? So that's what we should be able to do um, if we think about that for a minute. Um, slope is always change in y over change in x. So our slope of negative 0.587 
I'm going to put that over 1, right? And now what we can see is this. Every time x goes up by 1, y goes down by negative 0.587. In the context of the question, we can say um, every year the population of people living on farms decreases by, and you can write it this way, 0.587 million people, or you can notice, well, 0.587 times a million is 587,000 people. So this, is, this slope is indicating that we have a trend where people are not living on farms. Um, so now, here's a good question. First off, is the line, of, is the least squared regression line, is this equation the best model for this data? That's what we want to talk about next. So I'm going to go back to my calculator and create a residual plot and make sure that there's no, that it's nice and random. That's what I'm hoping for. So I'm a second stat plot. Um, now I've already done the regression. So what I know now is those residuals that are here are going to be the residuals I'm interested in, right? Because I did the linear regression of L4 versus L5. So when I go second stat, this residual list, uh, this number seven here, has changed. Okay, there it is. I'll press zoom nine, and here we go. Now you can look at this and decide what you think. Some people might say this is pretty randomly scattered. Some people might say something uh, like the following. Let me just uh, copy this picture for a second. Okay. Some people might say that if this point, if you look at these points, there's a sort of a U shape there. And then these two points, you know, maybe quite didn't quite fit that so well. So some people might be suspicious that this, this line might not be um, the best model for, for this data. However, since our correlation is so high, if we were going to try and predict things like, you know, what were the number of people living on farms in 1962, that would be reasonable to do. Because if you go to stat edit, the year 1962, is in sort of the domain of our regression line. We, you know, we had a point for 1960, we had a point for 1965. The line was really close to those points. So if you were going to guess 1962 and plug it in, that would be reasonable. Okay? What might not be reasonable is to go past 1980 for any um, significant amount of time. So one of the questions we want to talk about is, is it reasonable to use this line at best fit to predict how many people were living on farms maybe in the year 2000 or 2020. So let's give that a try. I'm going to try plugging 2000 into my line of best fit. And it simply means plug this in for x. So if we want, we can write all this again. 1166.9 plus negative 0.587 times 2000. And you could type that into your calculator. Or if you want, here's the faster way to do it. Do second quit. And right here on your home screen, do the following. Press vars, y vars, function y1, open parenthesis, 2,000. One more zero there. Close parenthesis. And what this means is the calculator is thinking that x is 2,000 and plugging it into y1. We'll see what would happen. All right, we hit enter, and we get this number. OK, let's think about that for a minute. Right? So this being negative doesn't make any sense in the context of the question. We're getting y hat of 2,000. It's approximately negative 6.6. .6. So it means negative 6.6 .6 million people are living on farms. And this sort of shows the danger of linear models, right? I mean, we would expect less people living on farms. We sort of general negative association, right? But um, this is saying something that doesn't make any sense. So that's why we say extrapolation can be dangerous, or extrapolate with caution. Um, so let, let's consider adding a point to our data set for a minute and talk about the effects of, of what outliers look like. All right, so I'm going to go to stat edit, 
And it might be the case, I mean, this data goes through 1980, uh, maybe in the year 1985, now I'm making this up, I, I don't really know, but maybe in the year 1985, the government said, oh, we need more people farming, or we're running low on oranges and things like that. So we need to in give an incentive. So maybe they passed some kind of law, and the law said that if you, know, you decided to have a farm or grow a fruit tree on your property, then you'd get a big tax break or something like that. And the government does things like this from time to time. And let's pretend all of a sudden, you know, in 1985 now, the number of people living on farms jumps from 7.2 million up to some number maybe like, I don't know, let's say 16.3 million. Okay, so that's a significant jump. And it sure isn't the number I would have expecting, would have been expecting if the pattern that had been there had continued. So a question might be, do you expect the least squared regression line to change? So let's talk about that. So actually, let's, let's go back to our, our calculator here. Let's go back to stat plot. Um, I'm going to hit enter here. And I'm going to go down to L5, put L5 in so I can look at my original data. I'm going to press um, zoom 9. Now remember, this is going to have the extra data point. So you can see, look, here's the old regression line. So a question might be, what do you think is going to happen with the, with the new regression line? Okay, so probably, here's the old one. I think the new one is probably going to do something like this. Okay, this new point is going to pull that regression line away from where it was, from away from the other points. And then additionally, what do you think is going to happen to R? Our old R value is 0.988, or I'm sorry, negative 0.988. Yeah, and most likely R is going to go down. So I would expect my slope, my previous slope was negative 0.587, and probably my new slope is going to be something not as uh, negative, because this line is actually not as steep in the negative direction. So maybe it's going to be like negative 0.3 or something. I don't know. But these are the kinds of things you should be able to just sort of guesstimate. You should be able to figure that out without actually doing the regression. Let's go do the regression, though, and confirm it and make sure it actually works. So I'm going to go to stat, and I'm going to go to calculate. I'm going to do a linear regression, number 8, and I'm going to do the same lists, L4, comma, L5, comma, and here's where I'm going to try and be clever. I'm going to press vars, y vars, function, y2. Now, the nice part about that is it's going to put the new regression line in y2, and I'll be able to look at both of them at the same time. All right, here you go. Let's look. Huh. R definitely um, is not... Now, I wrote something on the other board there for a minute. <coughs> I said R would go down, but it really, actually, R went up in this case. But I should say R, um, R indicates the linear relationship is not as strong. And the reason I'm mentioning that is, for those of you who are going to be technical, um, the number Point, negative 0.889 is technically a bigger number than negative 0.988, right? Because negative numbers going the opposite direction. Notice our slope is not as negative as it used to be. Now, I had guessed it might be negative 0.3. I was wrong. It's negative 0.458. Let's look at the graph. <coughs> Here's the original line of best fit, and here comes the new one. And sure enough, it got pulled by that point. This point here, okay, that point on, on the graph, let's copy this too because this is, this is so nice. Um, this point here, as I mentioned before, is called an influential outlier. Okay? And then also, we could ask the question, are least squared regression lines resistant? And the answer would be no. They're non-resistant, right? Because they're affected by outliers. Okay? Um, now, what would have been different? Let's, let's go back to StatEdit one more time and, and ask one more question. So let's go back to StatEdit. And let's, I had made up that story that the government offered some kind of tax break if you had a farm in 1985. Let's pretend they didn't do that. Um, maybe this number would have been something like hmm, 6.3 maybe. Okay? That's what would have happened if they didn't change anything and the current trend had continued, right, at that point in time. Now what would you expect to happen? So let's see what happens now. Let's do another linear regression. Let's go to stat calc 8, um, 
uh, that's not right here. We want L4. Uh, second L4, comma, second L5, comma, bars, Y bars, uh, function. And I'll go put that in Y2. I'm going to overwrite that other one. Oh, some kind of error here. Bear with me. Okay. We will do second L4, second insert, comma. That should work. Okay, good. Hit enter. And um, now what's interesting is that that correlation actually didn't change very much. And that could mean that the point I picked isn't quite on the line. Well, if we go to the graph now, and you look at it, you notice that last point actually was still kind of an influential outlier. So I should have made it lower. So let's try one more time. Ready? I'm going to go back to stat, edit, and I'm going to make that thing lower. I'm going to make that 6.3 like a 5 point something. Let's try that. Let's see if we can get this correlation a little bit higher. Let's go. Let's try 5.1. See if that does it. Okay, let's look at the graph. See how the point moved down over here? That was kind of nice. Let's make it even lower. Let's go with uh, 4.5. OK. That's the, maybe, maybe that'll do it. I'll even go lower, 4.2. Try that. OK. So now let's look at our graph. So that last one, now this seems to be more on the line than the other one was. Let's go uh, back to the home screen. And I'll do the following. If I do second enter, it just gives me the last thing I typed. I'll hit enter again. And here we go. And finally, I succeeded. My correlation is now used to be negative 0.988. Now it's negative 0.989. I've actually made the correlation indicate a stronger linear relationship. R squared went up. Okay, The slope obviously didn't change very much at all. And it shouldn't, because I tried to pick a point that was on the line. That would reinforce the slope as being the same thing. Okay. This is also an influential outlier, but it's a good influential outlier. It made things, made me more sure of my relationship. The other influential outlier actually made my relationship uh, less, li less linear and more like something else, which we'll talk about in chapter four. Um, let's say we have, we consider this case, and we, we've considered outliers adding an outlier out here and saw what that would do. We added an outlier on the line and we saw what that would do. But what if I added an outlier um, up here instead? We'll get rid of these two. And let's pretend I added an outlier like way up here. Okay. Uh, remember, every least squared regression line goes through the point. Uh, somewhere on here is the point x bar comma y bar. Right. So if you add an outlier directly above that, I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm going to put it directly above x bar y bar. If you do that, it will have the effect of pulling the line upwards, but parallel to the line you already had. Okay. So it won't change your slope. However, it will affect correlation. And you know that because now look at your residuals. You've got a lot of residuals that are much bigger than they used to be. All these distances from the black points to the blue lines are much bigger right, than the black points to the red line. Okay? So you would ruin R a little bit. That's another kind of influential outlier. A more fun thing, or something else you should know, uh, if you take an extra point, Let's say you put a data point right there on x bar, y bar. That also will make your r, your, your r go up, sort of reaffirms things. Okay? It won't change the line at all. 